Welcome to Every Church a Peace Church, a program that promotes the belief that the church could turn the world towards peace if the church lived and taught as Jesus lived and taught. Welcome back. My name is Don Edwards. I'm the host and producer of this program. And we're going to do something a little different for this episode. Ordinarily, if you're a, a viewer of this program, this has been an interview format type of program. We're going to try something a little different t today. Uh, we're going to show a, a video uh, of a, a very important subject, uh, the Bethlehem and the apartheid wall that surrounds Bethlehem. Uh, recently, there was a book uh, written by uh, a former president, Jimmy Carter. Uh, this book is titled Palestine Peace, Not Apartheid. It's a very important book and it has generated a lot of interest and a lot of criticism. Criticism usually coming from some major Jewish organizations, very critical of the information that's provided in this book. Uh, to, some, to some quarters, uh, this book and our President Jimmy Carter have been called anti-Semitic. The criticism and the organized criticism of against this book and against the, uh, President Jimmy Carter uh, has stunned President Carter and stunned many of us since Jimmy Carter is one president who's very familiar with the peace process and the facts on the ground in Palestine and in Israel. Today we're going to show a video, a video that gives you information about what is happening currently in Bethlehem in the West Bank in the building of the wall. There's a video called Sacred Space Denied Bethlehem and the Wall. It's a video that's been prepared by the Bethlehem International Center and distributed by Friends of Sabeel in North America. We're going to show that video to you now and then after it's over with, I'm going to come back and talk to you more about what we have seen there in the West Bank in Palestine. So let's go right now to that video. Bethlehem District, located in the middle of the West Bank, consists of four cities, 18 villages, and three Palestinian refugee camps. Since the majority of Palestinian Christians live there, Bethlehem, Beit Zahor, and Beit Jala are often referred to as the Christian Triangle. In 1967, Israel occupied the West Bank. Contrary to international law, which requires that occupied territories be left as they are. Successive Israeli governments have confiscated Palestinian lands, established Israeli settlements, and built settler-only roads to connect them. These settlements and roads now virtually surround the Bethlehem district. In 2003, the Israeli government embarked on the building of the security fence, or wall, in many areas, including Bethlehem, 
The wall has been built well inside the West Bank in order to include the settlements. This wall confiscates even more Palestinian lands, attaching them to the settlements and making them part of Israel. We're standing in Beit Zahur, east of Bethlehem. In front of you, to the north, uh, is the settlement of Har Homa, uh, and further over those hills is Jerusalem. We are approximately two kilometers from the Green Line, separating Israel from the West Bank. This settlement is being built as fast as possible, despite the road map, which requires that uh, settlement expansion be halted. It currently has about 800 units, and it is designed to have 6,500 units in total. As we look to the right, we see the fence coming down along the valley this way, and you see that all the land on the other side of the fence is now going to be annexed to Israel. You can see the separation fence. Here it is a fence, not a wall. Nonetheless, it still divides Palestinians from their land. This is a good example of the fence system. You can see uh, directly ahead of you that the fence is made up of several different sections. The first is a wire fence on the left side, then a dirt road, then a paved road, then another dirt road, and then another wire fence. All in all, it takes up approximately 120 feet. Ahead of you is the village of Beit Zahur on those hills up there. Immediately to your right is uh, a valley owned by people from Beit Zahur, filled with fruit trees and, and uh, olive trees. Uh, above us is the settlement of Har Homa. You can see how close Har Homa has been built to these existing Palestinian homes. The settlement of Har Homa, as we have said, has expansion plans but those plans do not include any expansion down here into this valley. The fence, as you can see, comes from up above where Har Homa is, down the hill past the Palestinian homes, around this curve here, and then back up the hill on the other side toward the rest of Beit Zahur. So the purpose of the fence here is a good example of how in many places in the West Bank, the purpose of the fence is not security, but land confiscation. Initially, the decision to build the security wall derived from genuine security concerns uh, to prevent suicide bombings in Israel and to separate Israelis from Palestinians. From the outset, this was a very difficult thing to do in Jerusalem because there are a third of the population are Palestinian, and Israelis and Palestinians are akin to Siamese twins. Unfortunately, the root of the wall, as decided by the government of Israel, discloses ulterior reasons, ulterior motivations, uh, namely a political motivation and a demographic one. Uh, the wall uh, weaves and bobs, including settlements deep in the West Bank around Jerusalem, and on the other hand, cutting deep into the city in order to exclude Palestinian neighborhoods that are part of Jerusalem, uh, to all intents and purposes, cutting them out of the city and from the centers of their lives. The wall separates Palestinians from Palestinians rather than Israelis from Palestinians. As a result, uh, it may well be that the wall, as currently designed in Jerusalem, will bring Israelis less security rather than more security, and perhaps be so far-reaching as to uh, jeopardize the possibility of future political agreements. The leaves that cut into the West Bank really dismember uh, uh, the Palestinian state into two, and seals East Jerusalem off uh, from its environs in the West Bank. In the absence of contiguity and a political connection to East Jerusalem, there'll be no peace.
We are now on Manger Street in the middle of Bethlehem. We are about two miles inside of Bethlehem from the checkpoint and perhaps two or three minutes from Manger Square and the Church of the Nativity. What you see is Har Homa. I think intrigues me the most about Har Homa is that it's the first thing you see when you walk into Bethlehem, even at the checkpoint. And no matter where you walk in Bethlehem, on this part of town, Har Homa is a kind of looming presence, always looking over you. So that Har Homa and the other settlements that surround Bethlehem, I think are a constant reminder to Palestinians that at any time, their land can be taken from them. Their ability to expand and build homes on their land can be forfeited through Israeli government policies. So I think if I were Palestinian, what this would mean to me is that these settlements, particularly Har Homa, is a constant reminder that my future has been taken away from me. My freedom has been taken away from me. This is the Jerusalem Bethlehem Road. It is the traditional entrance into Bethlehem. It's the one that Jesus would have used. He would have walked right down this road and right through this gate where Rachel's tomb is behind me. The Nativity, Church of the Nativity in Manger Square is perhaps three minutes from here. This area right here has the look and feel of a military camp. And there is military presence here. This area in particular used to be an incredibly thriving area with many businesses, restaurants, shops, hotels. They are virtually all shut now. There is no business here. There's no traffic through here. It has been completely blocked off. Palestinians are essentially not even allowed to come down this way anymore. Who's in charge here? The historic entrance of the little town of Bethlehem for over 2,000 years and the area around it have been confiscated by the Israeli government. The droning sound of bulldozers and the ongoing construction work are signaling to the people of Bethlehem that their days of relative freedom of movement are over and soon they will find themselves in an open-air prison. Restriction of movement, economic decline, and rising unemployment are Bethlehem's only prospects for the future. We're standing now in Beit Jala. Beit Jala is west of Bethlehem. What you see behind me on the hill above the tunnel and Route 60 is Gilo, an Israeli settlement established in 1971, which currently has about 29,000 settlers. The road that you're looking at, Route 60, is a bypass road. This is a good example of the roads that run throughout the West Bank, connecting the settlements to each other and to Israel. They are for settlers only. Palestinians are barred from using them. They serve as their own barrier, running through Palestinian towns and villages and cutting them off from each other and from Jerusalem. In a sense, the wall is the final piece in this system, solidifying Israeli control over any future Palestinian state preventing it from growth, contiguity, and any real viability. Hello? 
انا ولد شيافه مشيت في يافا صار الحرب امي وابوي خافوا مع هالناس اللي هربت هرب طلعوا اجينا عودنا على بيت جاله وسكننا في بيت جاله تجوزت في بيت جاله قلب للحرب ال 67 بيوم واحد يوم الاحد قلت له مرتي يلا تروح عند دار خالي على عمان سحبنا عنه ورحنا على عمان ثاني يوم قمنا من الصبح لابوه له حرب جربت اقدم مع الصليب الاحمر رفضوا انه ارجع جربوا امي تقدم لي لم شمل عده مرات سنه ال 79 اجاني جمع شمل اجيت اشتريت هاي الارض دونمين و100 متر ساكنين في عمان كنا 30 سنه واشي محرومين منه منطقه خضراء هيك ارض خضراء كلها شجر طيور من الصبح يقوم على صوت العصافير اخذت رخصه ب 82 وبلشت ابني يعني البنى مش بالهين طلعت عيني تك منها كملت البيت شو قديش فرحتي وانا اشتغل في الدار لما سويت التسويه اللي تحت شوي شوي طلعنا لفوق شوي شوي ثلاث مدميك شوي شوي ثلاث مدميك يعني كيف انسان بحس انه هذه مملكته هذه حياته كنت هذا الحلم اللي كنت احلم فيه اتحقق لي بالنسبه لي بالنسبه لعيالي لداري انه اول ما جينا بالفعل كنا مبسوطين وكانه حققنا الحلم اللي كنا نحلم فيه كنا فرحانين كثير من حد ما اجانا الكتاب انه بده يصير هون نفق وبده يصير شارع من هون بلشت عذابنا في 8 3 بذكر 8 3 93 جابوا لي كتاب من اسرائيل انه استملكنا ارضك عن هاي هاي ارضي هذه ارضي كلها هذه مش غرتي من ابوي ولا من جدي هذه تعد وشكاي العمر كله 93 فاجئوني بيقولوا لي بدنا ناخذها هذه بدنا نسوي نفق وشارع اسمه شارع 60 هذا اللي احنا واقفين ناحيته انا من يوميتها صار عندي انهيار اعصاب يعني ان هميت شفت الجرافات بتيجي بتشتل بتخلع مع الشجر بظل الشجر اخذوا الارض صار عندي نيار اعصاب دخلت المستشفى صرت اتعالج عند الدكتور سنتين لان هي الاعصاب We are standing now in the Kremazan Valley in Beit Shela. In the distance behind me, you can see the settlement Gilo, all along the top of this hill. Behind this hill is Jerusalem and the Green Line. We are approximately two kilometers from the Green Line here into the West Bank. Over to the, over to the right, we can see Route 60 and the tunnel. This entire Kremazan Valley is going to be confiscated and annexed to Gilo, annexed to Israel. All of the owners of this land, Palestinian owners, will lose their land, which as you can see has been carefully tended for generations, terrace trees. And they will lose this land and they will not be compensated for it. By building roads like Route 60, the Israeli government literally invades people's gardens and backyards. The recent decision to transfer the fertile valleys of Krimazan and Mekror to the Israeli side of the wall, separating them from Beit Jala and attaching them to the settlements, means the Israelis will block any chance for the area's economic growth and agricultural development. كان في الدار في النهار لكن الجيش باب الدار نزلت اشوف شو في بعطوني اوراق وبعطوني خوارق انه انا بده يجي جدار وصوروني حته وانا اخذ بالورقه 
هم راحوا من انا وانا غلي قلبي ومش عارفين اجرينا من راسنا مش عارفين شو بدهم يسووا بعدها بقى من يوم كان عيد مار الياس رحنا نصلي عمار الياس رجعنا لكن الشجر مقصوص الشجر معلم وعرفنا انه الجدار كيف بده يجي واعطونا خارطه في هذا الحكي هذا يا سيدي تاع اطفال ها هاي العلامات قدامك هذا الجدار بده ينزل هيك هيك بده يجي شايف هانا بده يجي هانا بده يجي من هانا هيك بده يجي هانا شايف هذا بده يجي لحديت هانا وبعدين بده يمشي هيك هاي الشكه هذه سكرت هاي الشكه هذه سكرت هذا كله هي بده يصير جدار هذه الشجره تعلموها معناته هذه من بدها تكون عنده بمنطقته يعني من عند اسرائيل وهان الجدار وهي البيت قديش ببعد البيت عن الجدار قديش ببعد فيش 4 متر لما بيجي الجدار 9 متر تفضل شوفوا معي لو ايه بده يجي الجدار هاي بده يجي هيك دغري هيك على هوا الخارطه احنا بنقول على العلامات هاي هيك كل الشجر اللي شافه مركمه ضل الخلع وهي الدليل انه كسكسوا من فوق مشان يسهل عليهم خلعه When I was shown the root of this wall in this valley several months ago, I simply could not turn away. This is not good for Israel or for the Palestinians. Confiscating people's land unnecessarily cannot possibly lead to peace. The spiritual heritage of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam emanated from this land. Our understanding of God came to us through this land. You can feel God's presence in every stone, every hill, every valley. This truly is sacred space, and there is no other place like it on earth. It is greater than any one of our traditions. As such, it cries out not to be possessed or to have more borders or walls, but to be shared peacefully and fairly and with the generosity of spirit in which it was given to us. And so we are challenged. How do we care for something so precious? I ask you to think about what you've seen. I ask you to pray over it. I ask you to leave room for God's grace to move you to take some action toward peace. What you have just viewed is a production of Sacred Space Denied, Bethlehem and the Wall, focusing only on one area of the West Bank, the Bethlehem or the Christian Corridor there, and how the wall impacts the Palestinian people who live in that particular area. I want to thank the uh, International Center of Bethlehem that produced this uh, video and also the Friends of Sabeel of North America. Uh, we're going to show the uh, web address for both organizations. And if you want 
copies of this video and more information about the wall in Bethlehem and throughout the West Bank and the oppression of the Israeli occupation of the Palestinian people, then these are two uh, wonderful sources to go to. Uh, one of the criticisms um, or one of the responses that President Carter had to the criticism of his book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid, was that the American people are not being told the facts of the oppression of the Israeli occupation. Uh, my wife's uh, grandmother has a saying that we, they do better if they knew better. And I believe that the American people, if they knew what their taxpayer money is going to in terms of support and payment for the construction of this wall, this horrendous wall that divides uh, Palestinians from Palestinians, that confiscates their land without any compensation, uh, that really causes conflict and tension rather than peace and security for Palestinian and for Israel, that if the American people knew what was going on, maybe the policies of the American government in support of what Israel is doing would change. Uh, that is why there's been so much criticism about this book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid, from the Israeli government and those that support this type of injustice that's occurring daily in Palestine. Um, when was the last time you saw on NBC or Good Morning America photos or information that you have just witnessed? CNN, PBS, it's not there. And the question is why? Why don't we know when the rest of the world knows the injustice that is occurring daily in Palestine? It's the call. Why, and why should we know? Why should we be concerned? We should be concerned about it every time we go to the gas station. We should be concerned about it when, uh, when we talk about Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan because that type of oppression and injustice, the world knows, but the American people don't. So thank you for being with us. We want, I want you to seek peace, find peace, and be peace. How long will it be till the world can finally see that they turn their back on love from one to another? It's time to uncover.